Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Fist or Forged in Shadow Torch. If you guys haven't already caught the gameplay we uploaded yesterday, then you can check that out over on the channel. That of course gives you a chance to take a look at the beginning of the game. But today I want to put together a uh, few handy tips on some of the things that I wish I knew before I started the game. This game of course launches today for PS5 and PS4. So if those of you guys looking for a new Metroidvania fix, then you might be jumping into this one and uh, hopefully these tips will be helpful. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like will be super appreciated. And let me know in the comments down below if you'll be checking this out yourself. So to begin with, let's start with picking the right tool for the job. Throughout the game, you'll encounter a variety of different weapons, and every weapon can and will get the job done, but you'll find that different weapons may be better equipped to take down certain enemies. In Fist, surprise surprise, you're going to gain access to the eponymous Fist itself. You also have my personal favourite, the Gurren Lagann inspired drill, and you also have electrified whips. These all have their own unique playstyle, so it's important to learn what's best for you and what enemies are most susceptible to their attacks. The fists are your go-to, run-of-the-mill weapon, they allow for quick combos, uppercuts and ground pounds. Their unique ability is the ability to grab enemies with circle, allowing you to open up opponents who are blocking your attacks. So basically, run up, grab them and then uh, punch their lights out. However, moving on from there to the Gurren Lagann, the drill that pierces the heavens, maybe not the heavens, but pierces the enemies. The drill is a slightly slower weapon, capable of longer combos and some swift movement techniques allowing you a little bit more AoE control over the fights on screen. And it then has a special action which allows you to open these turbine-like doors and also provides you with some extra utility in traversal. Then finally, the whip is a faster weapon. It's longer range as well, which is great for keeping foes at a distance and also introduces some fun mechanics with overcharging your whip and firing out some rockets. And while you'll encounter these weapons and obtain them at different points throughout the game, as you can see, there's a nice sort of mix there to really give you different options for when you're fighting your enemies. However, on top of that, the next most important thing is to level up your weapons. You can level up your weapons at the save points listed around the world, and this is broken into several trees. It requires money and sometimes an in-game item called a data disc, but these will really open up the flow of combat for each weapon type, as well as provide you with some extra offensive options on those tougher boss fights. It's important to make sure that you are leveling up these weapons at every opportunity, especially given that they all have different skill trees, because you'll be surprised just how much these upgrades can help you dish out extra damage on those later bosses. So while it may well be kind of tempting to lean more into the weapon that you enjoy the most, definitely make sure you are spending your time upgrading all three to get the most out of them. Now, of course, this is a Metroidvania style game, so you'll be doing plenty of exploration. But the next point to keep in mind is that it's OK to miss areas. Metroidvania typically, of course, have loads of avenues to explore, items to collect, secret areas to discover. It can seem kind of daunting at first, especially when you don't remember the map. But don't feel like you need to explore every area straight away. If that's your playstyle, fair enough but you can always revisit these areas later. And in fact, it's actually encouraged, of course, because once you obtain these new items, you'll get new traversal options, which of course opens up the map. So don't stress about exploring every corner right at the start because you'll have plenty of opportunities to revisit them later on. Speaking of exploring the map, make sure you're actually using the map. Sounds kind of simple, but this is something that uh, quite often in these kind of games, you can feel lost. And if you are feeling lost, pull out the map. It really is very easy to lose your bearing in Metroidvania style games, but thankfully this one actually provides a useful map for your next objective. So you always have a useful marker kind of pointing you in the direction you need to go. The map also details the percentage of an area that's cleared and even the items that you've left behind. So going back to our previous point about not worrying too much about exploring every single corner, when you revert back and you take a look at the map, you can then of course use that to check off and find out what you might have missed when you do decide to go and revisit. Now, of course, outside of that, it really is just a case of exploring the world and uh, taking on those bosses, taking on those battles and seeing what the game has to offer. So for the time being, I'll leave you guys with that. Hopefully those tips have been helpful. Hope that's given you guys some things to keep in mind. And again, do be sure to let me know in the comments down below if you guys are playing this. And if so, which weapon is your favorite? Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.